Good afternoon, everyone. You're all very welcome to another market update here at the Alpha Capital Group. So today um, we're going to be looking at I suppose, some of the volatility this week um, brought about by the likes of the RBA interest rate meeting the on Monday night into Tuesday morning, the Canadian or Bank of Canada interest rate meeting yesterday, both of which provided upside shocks to the markets. This week, we're really starting to see the influx of summer, uh, traditional summer movement in the markets. Very, very choppy, very, very rangy, very back and forth. Um, a shift in dynamics, shift in sentiment, nearly between session to session. Um, so we will obviously be looking at that in greater detail today. Um, so I suppose without further ado, getting into the market dynamic today, as we said, we've had two upside surprises from a central bank policy this week. We've had RBA raising rates by 25 basis points very, very early Tuesday morning. And we followed that up yesterday afternoon with also another 25 basis point increase by the Bank of Canada in their latest monetary policy meeting. Now, both um, have or, or were pausing or, or had the emphasis of pausing in terms of its interest rates, um, but both, like the Fed, have actually raised again more recently um, beyond that. So overall, the consensus at the minute, um, whether they become more sustained and we see further increase in, in interest rates over the next number of months is obviously let's wait and see because, of course, both were expected to pause. Both did increase rates. So we have to be cautious of the upside hawkish volatility associated with these central banks at the minute. And, of course, we will be looking at the Aussie USD. We will be looking at the USD CAD today um, in a backdrop of, of some of those volatility moves that we've seen this week. Now, in addition to that, we've had... Australian growth coming out this week, uh, lower than expected. We've had European growth this morning, lower than expected. And I suppose year on year, Q on Q, Q on Q, European growth, negative 0.1%. So traditionally speaking, the old narrative for a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. We had it briefly uh, in 2020 into 2021. We have potentially starting to see that kind of discussion point come about again off the back of higher um, global central bank interest rates um, off the back of that uh, drop. OK, um, so with that as well, we have to look at the year on year growth, particularly in Europe as well, coming in as well, lower than expected at one percent. So one point three was the previous one point two was the forecast narrowly revised lower. Um, but that has even come in less than expected as we see European growth at one percent. So that's obviously going to affect indices. That's going to affect stock market performance, because, of course, the weaker growth play a uh, higher outlook in terms of interest rates is definitely a negative annotation for financial markets. So it's just about being aware of these things in line with price action, in line with current market dynamics, macro trends, etc. Um, now, for the rest of the week, um, we do obviously have the weekly jobless claims as we do every Thursday in the US at one thirty today. Um, and we do have overnight, we've got Chinese CPI and we have Canadian employment figures um, tomorrow as well. So there's not really too much left for the week in terms of a data perspective. It's really looking at kind of current market sentiment, current market directional bias to apply that with some of these underlying teams that we talked about. And we only have to go back to some of the teams we talked about last week in terms of inflation, growth. And this debt ceiling discussion, it's still very much been uh, the forefront of markets, particularly in the U.S. trading session or trading zone as well. So be always be mindful of that in this regard as well. So that's where we are from a fundamental perspective. And um, if we tie it back into the markets, firstly, I'm going to focus on today is really gold because that's illustrating the volatility that we're seeing in these markets in a minute. Gold. Is, is, a, is a clear catalyst of that shift between volatility upside and downside from session to session because, of course, we've had clear influxes of selling uh, trend or selling sentiment within the markets followed by direct pullbacks. And what you have to, I suppose, understand is that in the summer markets, you'll get a lot of this. You'll get a lot of back and forth whipsawing between buying and selling um, sentiment not not only on a weekly basis but also on a daily basis like you look at last week last thursday friday very very strong buying particularly off of last friday's nfp and we've saw very very clear selling after the nfp following that kind of stronger influx into dollar uh, dollar bias so thursday very very bullish friday very very bearish 
Monday we saw further dollar strength or further gold strength coming back into the markets only to reject again yesterday and come back into this liquidity zone that we've talked about down here between 1938 and 1940. Um, so we've been very much meandering back and forth and we see a lot of that in, in these markets. We see a lot of it in the FX, we're seeing a lot of it in the indices which we'll talk about it now in a moment as well. But gold is very much reacting off of this 1938-1940 level down here. We have seen a further pop higher and um, particularly on the one hour chart following from where we were last night at 11 p.m. 12 p.m. UK time into that daily rollover at this 1940 level we are trading kind of five six dollars above that zone so simple things like that can go a really long way because of course if you look at the minute very very clear selling and balance in the markets yesterday um, followed by that kind of snapback we're starting to see that recovery again so it'll be worth interesting to see do we start to see that dollar play roll over again right because I, as you know we've been filtering from dollar strength dollar weakness dollar strength dollar weakness back in regurgitating those sentiments one way then another so that's really really important over the next few days and then obviously being able to have clarity with that but as we speak at the minute gold selling very very visible yesterday and back into a heavy uh, sustainable level and we are seeing buying impulses coming back in again and simple things like order flow as well this morning if you're looking at 15 or 30 minute charts this morning you'll see that nice pop short term pullback on the 15s new high again in the 15s new low again in the 15s we're starting to see that kind of regurgitation in the opposite trend direction whereby we've higher high higher low higher high higher low so we're starting to see those movements play out again so it's just about being patient it's just about being disciplined in that regard and just having clarity in terms of what you're doing and in terms of the execution as well above all else now moving across to the dxy that kind of filters this kind of team that we're talking about this week that is shift that constant shift in sentiment and market dynamics is witnessed across the board so we've talked about it in gold there you can see it now in in dollar very very clearly of course last couple of weeks we've had very very clear strength dollar strength um very very clear correction last thursday we talked about it there with that gold sell-off last Friday, allowed that dollar recovery. Where did the dollar come back into? This area here between 104, 104.50. So this value area, if you look left, you'll see a lot of consolidation, a lot of volume consolidating in around this region. We've had a multiple test on Monday. We had a secondary test on Tuesday. We broke down to create new lows yesterday, new lower lows in this short-term cycle of price action, only to return back up into the value area. And you can see very, very, very clearly we have come off that value area around 104.20 and we're siphoning price action to the downside again and moving lower in that regard. And you can see now that it does look very, very clearly that the dollar at least is trying today to move lower again. And that will really bring in this 103.50 level back into play again. So simple things like that, simple structure, simple clarity goes a long way in terms of your bias, in terms of demonstrating what are you looking for in the markets and then being able to apply a critical logic to that in terms of execution and trade management broadly beyond that. All right. So that's where we are in the DXY. Euro dollar, again, is, is very much inverse to that. So, of course, with the DXY moving lower, Euro dollar, GBP USD, for example, will try and grind higher because, of course, the inverse movements. And we've seen that, okay? We've seen that very, very aggressive move last Thursday, the unwind on Friday off, the, off of that bullish dollar. We've gone from lower low, lower, lower high, lower low into a change of trend, okay? Yesterday, of course, Wednesday, with that aggressive breakout to the upside, taking out this short-term liquidity, raising it, into this 107 107 40 level only to come back to the value area now on euro dollar we didn't all get all the way back to the order block liquidity area all the way down here at 106 85 but we did come very very close within seven eight points so even introducing secondary confluences like for example fibs you'll see very very clearly a nice reaction from the golden ratio so simple things like that building those confluences will help to clarify and even out market dynamics market bias broadly beyond that and of course as we see at the minute we are moving back up to the upside and trying to take out this high so all really present market bias today is really do we break out through this 107.40 level if we do then we know the logical scenarios we're going to try and work higher back up into 107.60 back up into this 107.80 from where we were where we came off from last friday off the back of the nfp so simple things like that really does go a long way in terms of market dynamics market bias okay now if we look at cable you'll see very very similar things so last week in cable we talked about this higher high back into value area new higher high taking out this order flow here so this trending price action we talked about last week very very nice break we got that pullback on the nfp all the way back into this 
area down here, 12350, 12400, of where we saw this very, very strong reaction. We didn't get all the way back to um, the area, but there is, if, if you were even to look at that one there, we have come very, very close to it. All of a sudden, we're trading within a couple of points of that zone. We find our bottom, we find our consolidation, we aggressively break out of that region yesterday. We did come all the way back down yesterday evening into, I suppose, after the London close, into the US close. We found our bottom around 124.30, 124.25, and we're starting to cycle up again. So this is really alluding to the fact of what we talked about last week in terms of higher highs, higher lows, new higher high, new circle of lows in this region down here. And we're starting to break the even the internal structure where we're getting short-term highs, short-term lows. So it's all about playing that trend dynamic. One of the big things you should be looking at in the markets is trend, right? Sentiment and trend are really, really important. So at least that way then you have a very good idea of where the markets have come from, where the next stage logically should go. And then you can factor in your kind of confluences around that to kind of really bulk up your analysis, strengthen your analysis and make it as consistent and as sustainable as it can be. And some simple things like that really, really do go a long way. All right. Now, with the dollar yen, we talked about it last week. We've had this very, very clear uh, upside break. We've had that aggressive move to the downside all the way back into this um, zone down here, this kind of discounted area between the 707786. Um, you will also see as well that we've had the, the structure dynamic constantly changing, right? So by that, what I mean by that is we've had aggressive move to the upside, kind of like what we had in cable, taking out the previous trend, creating that lower lows, internal structure, consolidation, aggressive move to the downside, only to manipulate and go aggressively in the opposite direction, taking out these highs. So we were getting kind of variances between lower low, lower high into higher low, higher high. So we're starting to change that trend, trend dynamic. Now at this point in time, with that weaker dollar play as we talked about here, with this weaker DXY, if we start to see that continue to move lower, there's no real reason at this moment in time to be buying dollar yen. It should really be a case of watching to see how far does it come back into. Does it come back into revisit this area down here between 139 139.50? Well, that would be probably the most logical scenario at the minute. If you play a 30 minute area, you can see consolidation. We've got that manipulation, aggressive move back up price action is working its way back down so if we bring these fibs over slightly to the right and this area here is really what i would be focused on and if we m remove the larger fib structure bring in the shorter term internal fib structure like so on the internal side of price action sorry folks give me one moment you can see as well that the 707786 comes in right smack bang of what we talked about between that 139, 139.50 and around that 139.30 level. So that's what I would be looking at today to see, do we see that gradual assimilation? And if we do, how does market dynamics react around here? Because there is that potential to see, well, if the DXY sells off temporarily, like with current trend dynamic, can we sell off maybe back into this region, try and find a floor again, like what we did over here last week so please keep an eye on that one this week because that's that's obviously something to watch out for not just today but into the end of this week and into early next week and of course tomorrow we'll, we'll be doing a quick wrap up on that as well now aussie usd so the aussie usd has been very very bullish this week so we know that when central banks increase their interest rates there is an appetite to buy the currency where where the rates are rising right so we've seen or we've seen the rba raise rates this week it's definitely aided the aussie in terms of pushing and we talked about it last week when the when the price action was way down here look for price action return back up into this 66 50 67 level we can back up into this short-term decision area here around 66 50 we blew right through what happened from there we started to migrate and, and kind of even out this order flow this liquidity that we saw here through mid-may into the end of may before we had that aggressive sell-off we are now are fully mitigating this as well. Now there is one last area up here around 67.78, but from a short term perspective, we have come back into a fairly important and key pivot level. And this yellow box that you'll see is also a FIB retracement level. So we've, we've gone through the 61.8, we are now reacting or coming off of that. We're, we're just about holding just above the 61.8 at the minute, but we have come off that discount zone as well. So just take that into consideration as well. If you look at the one hour structure, you'll see very, very, very clear 
uh, short-term order flow, so highs into higher lows, highs, lows, that gradual assimilation higher, aggressive move to the upside, and then what happens? We break structure, we take out this order flow here, we come back into this structured bottom here, we've come back up then to mitigate retest take out the liquidity at this level so really now today it's it's going to be break or bounce from this zone if we break through the likelihood is we're probably going to continue grinding higher look at that higher level we've just talked about on the four hour and if we don't then you can look at potential rejections from here so keep an eye on that one today because there might be a potential setup in that one if you if we take out the higher time frame fibs for a second and we look at the shorter term dynamic as well you'll see it very 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 clearly fibs has come back to the 61.8. So keep an eye on this one. If we go to a 15 minute chart, for example, there is a 15 minute just at the top of the 7.86. So worth watching this region today very, very closely to see, does selling come in? If it doesn't come in, build those invalidations. Say, well, if it breaks to a certain level, a certain price point, that bias is no longer valid. Therefore, let's wait and see. Let's take a step back. Let's remain patient. Let's remain disciplined and then find those entries accordingly. Okay, it's the best process that you can adopt in any of these assets, regardless whether it's indices, um, commodities, FX, cryptocurrencies, you apply the same logic consistently across the board. Okay, now, moving lastly in the FX markets to dollar CAD, you will also see this week we've had that surprise shock yesterday in the BOC interest rates, raising rates from 4.5% to 4.75%. Now, if you look at the current dynamic of the market, right, USD CAD has also been very much affected by the volatility in oil prices, okay? If you look at, let's say, Brent or UK oil, we've had very, very clear trends. And over the last week or so, in particular, you will see oil prices has rallied quite significantly. We're trading on UK oil, and um, we were trading around kind of 70, 71. We've gone back up into the 76, 77 range. So naturally enough, when oil is bullish, you will see that influx of strength into the Canadian economy. Why is that, you say? Because the Canadian dollar has a very, very strong correlation to the oil markets because it's the primary sectoral output or one of the primary sectoral outputs of the Canadian economy. So naturally enough, if oil prices is, is stronger, the US, the Canadian economy, should I say, is going to be stronger, which means the currency is going to be stronger moreover beyond that. And that's why the Canadian currency has actually really picked up some significant strength over the last week or so in particular. But this week, in addition to that, we've seen that gradual trend again. So we've seen that consolidation into the end of last week. We saw oil prices pick up again. We gapped higher at the beginning of the week. We did gap close temporarily, but since then, the oil prices have remained fairly consistent. Throw into that the BOC interest rate decision yesterday, that, uh, that 25 basis points, you'll see it here at three o'clock, massive move to the downside. We, we, we went from 130, underneath that kind of 140 handle, 138.90, all the way down to 132.90. 20 so a 70 point move in the canadian dollar and then we just gradually continued off so after we got that brief spike we did get a little bit of a pullback you'll see it on the 15s as well a little bit of a breakdown bit of a pullback price action then just continued to drift off through the course of the afternoon so it's just about being aware of that now we are back into a very very important uh supply and demand level right so you've got the supply and demand logic coming in here as well 133 133 50 has been exceptionally strong through april through may through june so if oil prices were let's say to break through certain highs then that's probably going to fulcrum into more additional support into the canadian dollar i.e usd cad with a continued selling bias but at this moment in time it's really worth playing to see how does market sentiment react at this 133 level. If we break through 133s, then most likely you'll see that continual probably grind. You can see that continual slide most likely back into 131, 130, which does give a four or two to 300 point macro trend that's probably going to play out over the coming weeks. So simple things like that builds your analysis, builds your analysis, builds your information database. So at least that way, then the more information you have, the better your decision-making process, i.e. the better your trades are going to be. Simple things like that can work really effectively. So as we move from gold and the dollar story into the stock markets, the, the big story really at the minute is, again, as we talked about it last week, S&Ps, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, last week saw very, very strong buying. We saw tech being strongly weighted in terms of, of risk on sentiment, i.e. market buying. There was a lot of appetite for investors, institutions, and head funds to buy back into that now if we look at where we are currently at this week we have seen that rapid um 
ascension into that 14500 level start to stall out so the last couple of days or so we're starting to see price action stall out but the overriding trend is still very much bullish right every time we make a new high we get a little bit of a pullback we make a new high a new high bit of a pullback new high again bit of a pullback now if we isolate price action this week we did say last week keep an eye on two things obviously first thing is is seeing how do we close is is un is incrementally very 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 important so last week we closed um way up here at this 14500 level at the beginning of this week we continue to remain above it until we broke underneath this 14500 level very very aggressively yesterday now since that sell off yesterday we've come all the way back down into the short term high here around this 14250 14300 level like a knife through butter now since then we have found a little bit of a bottom we have found a little bit of short term buying impetuses coming in the short term time frames at this level so really now today is really assessing and evaluating price action between this 14 250 14 300 level now if you bring in your 15s or your 30 minute time frames you will also see very very clear selling and balance straight line selling all the way back down into this value area over here if we look left if i draw it out very 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 quickly you'll see it as well very very quickly you can see that value area aggressive buying out of range tops out comes all the way back down to said region very very clearly observed over here now since then we've had as i said that aggressive breakthrough this morning but we're still some way ahead of pulling back against this movement but i suppose you're looking for early signs now the early signs here is you're starting to see lows short-term highs short-term lows short-term highs lows and then that filtration back into the upside again now this movement this morning from eight o'clock into the last couple of hours or so has taken out the structural lows that we've kind of formed overnight in the asia session so we have taken out the asia highs so really my focal point is today is seeing how does the markets as we pull back into this region down here how does the market dynamic react down here to see do we actually hold up this level or is this a short-term false break to the upside only to really take out these lows and continue cementing bearish sentiment and that's really the big talking point that we should be looking at in the next kind of four to six trading hours as we approach the afternoon and of course the end of tonight's us trading session similarly with the s p's very very aggressive trend move so this is just broader daily trend for a second you'll see the trend very very clearly if we tidy this out for a moment take some of these blue lines out of the equation briefly for a second you'll see the broader trend still very much playing out so those things we kind of talked about here that four hour trend still very very much bullish you can identify the consolidations we can see the new highs new lows new highs new lows regurgitation back into strength uh yesterday formulating highs of 4300 holding under 4300 at the beginning of the week now this is where things also becomes extremely interesting because of course we'd taken short-term highs into consolidation took highs briefly monday then took lows back into consolidation strong reaction from 4300 as a price point of which saw further selling coming through yesterday after we had marginally broken through 4300 so you can even see here on the wick we did get above 4300 briefly before snapping back and actually making new lows in the week so at this point in time like what we saw in the nas i would be focused to see right we've we've created highs new lows we've pulled back in to really effectively create equal highs or marginal underneath equal highs we've made new lows here let's see does the market come up one last time into this 4284 4285 value area from yesterday to see if there's any sort of reaction and if so we can look at some fairly decent selling moving lower progressing back into this downside and that will then start to see can we start on doing some of that selling price action we saw through friday and through thursday where we can look at a potential run back into this 4200 level as a potential next higher low within the bullish trend but let's see how this one plays out today let's see how dynamics re react i think there's a there's a lot of trading to take place yet before we really start to to get this confirmed but it's absolutely no harm or or, or really important to have these conversations so at least that way we're identifying scenarios um ahead of time now lastly with dow jones again uh, the Dow Jones, a very, very aggressive break back above this 33,700 level that we talked about. We had that peak high on Monday. We did aggressively sell off Monday. We have ground back up Tuesday, Wednesday into the day and back into this 33,700 level. So even if you were to play short term counter trend, you'd say, well, very, very bullish here. Obviously, we've created a top with short term highs with short term lows. If we start to look at the short term cycle briefly for a moment, you'll see 
very very clear consolidation brief decline back into this value area here where we traded for about two or three days monday evening into tuesday really into wednesday very very choppy we had that grind we're forming short-term tops up here around 700 so worth keeping a close eye on that one and of course if you were to bring in your fibs again as a secondary confluence just isolating this short-term piece of price action you can see very very nicely where we're currently trading at so some very very interesting setups coming on this one as well and then of course lastly but not least moving into europe right moving into europe we've seen uh, a significant volatility this week in the dax in the euro stocks and of course in the FTSE so the FTSE um, was holding or, or got back into that 76.50 level 76.25 level we talked about this last week we have continued to trade around that zone right so you'll see this 76.50 level is still very much uh, in accumulation right so really what we're looking at there is really establishing bias to see well if we do really close above 76.50 70, 76.50 76.60 let's say for example then the likelihood is we're going to continue migrating to the upside and we're starting to pull back with a deeper retracement against this selling bias that we saw into the last week of may but as we look at shorter term cycles we can see at this minute in time markets is still fairly consolidated between the 7600 and 7650 so we're looking for clarity in terms of that regard if we're looking for selling we're really looking for this structural price action to continue breaking down where we can start to build those confidences in terms of that bearish bias so at this moment in time it's probably the least pretty it's the least uh clear of all of the indices or any or any of the assets that we're looking at but important nonetheless to kind of put clarity on the situation now dax um is really really important as well because if we look at the dax we've had that very very sharp aggressive move last week we talked about it thursday and friday into this 16,000 16,100 level we did get short-term pullbacks into this 15,9 area here which was supported monday tuesday and briefly yesterday before we had that v-shaped move back up but as you look at it now price action is formulated highs we've made kind of structural lows we've created lower highs again here we've made new structural lows and we've pulled back again into this 16,000 level so from my perspective today it's really how does the price action react up at this 16,000 level because you'll see here very very quickly we haven't just fully mitigated this 50 this 30 minute candle here at 16,025 16,030 but we have come very very close so you start to see these tops coming in start to see the tops coming in again today so it'll be interesting to see does that start to bring forward selling into the markets whereby we can maybe start to see that elongation of bearish price action at this moment in time let's wait and see so still early days here again in the dax but there's initial signs there and of course if we are to break above this 16 to uh, 025 030 level 040 level and then you can really start to pinpoint and move back up into these highs from the beginning of the week but as as such the one hour does probably give a little bit more weight because it just carries a little bit more confirmation and, and and clarity um so that's kind of what i'm looking at there myself today just keep an eye on these one hours of course a one hour breakthrough really invalidates short bias at the minute particularly for the next few hours accordingly beyond that and then last but not least the finish is the euro stocks so the euro stocks we talked about it last week with lows we cycle highs with new lows we'd cycle highs notice how the price action came all the way back up into this region that we talked about here now that's obviously on a four hour chart just to get a broader trend dynamic if we look at the one hour for a second you'll see uh these two um areas of interest here between as i said 43 40 43 25 43 25 mitigated perfectly very very clear reaction where we started to sell off tuesday wednesday into this range so similarly again we're looking to see if, if there's any sort of selling coming through here as a new potential lower low around 4300 to try and circulate more bearish price action to the downside breaking out through the weekly lows that we have this week at 4270 and then really ultimately progressing lower to try and take out these lows of the four hour cycle of what was being created as lower low lower high lower low lower high and new potential lower low so it's just all about the volume volume profiles i think is useful your value areas are useful your liquidity your order flow your trending price action is useful trend identification can also add as a secondary or tertiary or even a fourth confluence within your trading plan but above all else that clarity is is really really important so that's where we are for this week so far everyone um really the markets are really starting to 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 heat up a little bit today so there's a lot of setups potentially coming through there so keep an eye on market dynamics today um, build those conferences as we said but above all else make sure you maintain that risk management risk management is so so important in summer markets 
when we get those constant alterations in sentiment and changes in dynamic so just be very very wary of that as well all right have a great week everyone trade safe and we'll be back tomorrow um for a weekly roundup of the price action this week